Hello everyone and welcome to Cabin Fever Crochet. I'm Helene and I'm bringing to you today a full-on tour with one of our yarn shops down in the city in Spokane, Washington. We're in northeastern Washington State, otherwise known as the Inland Northwest. And I want to tell you just a little bit about the history of this because I love old buildings. I don't know about you, but it's really neat and you'll see it as we go inside. The shop, it's called Paradise Fibers, established in 1996 when they purchased this very old bakery building, which is an historic landmark near our downtown area. It was built in the early 1900s, which they amazingly renovated themselves. So you will both see and feel the history as we make our way through this huge 26,000 square foot building. So I've added links below with their contact information and their website along with another business of interest that I will tell you about in just a minute. And uh, everything you see in the store is also offered online and, and they do it all. I mean, knitting, crocheting, spinning, felting, dyeing, it looms and with all the supplies. And uh, since the storefront reopened now after the shutdown, I noticed that a lot of their shelves are, are empty in um, certain pockets areas within and I'm sure that'll change as business builds up again. I also went online and just did a little bit of research of this and that and I saw some mixed reviews here and there however it seemed most of the mixed were older in nature and you know just to say that my experiences that I had recently were very positive. Everyone was just friendly and nice and helpful, and they catered to both crocheters and knitters, which was very refreshing, and um, I felt very welcome in the store. And one of the gals who works there, her name is Karen, she and her husband own a woolen shop over in Post Falls, Idaho. It's called Fibers First. It's only 30 minutes from Spokane, and they have tours available, and she said it's really neat to see. So if you're ever in the area, check them out, but she said to please call first, and I'm going to leave her contact information below. And uh, they do primarily spinning and carding. She, uh, she said they also do work with independent people for their milling needs, but they do have various minimums. Um, for example, three pounds of roving, five pounds of yarn, you know, and, and so on. So anyway, let's just go ahead and walk on in and get going with this tour. Beautiful color of feast for your eyes. So I hope you will enjoy it just as much as I did. Okay. I well, I hope you're excited because I know I am. And the outside may not look like much and even maybe a little bit rough looking, but it is just so true. You can't always judge a book by its cover. Okay, so here we go through the front door already in. And first thing on the right is just a taste of their Malabrigo yarn. And I know a couple people who would love this. They have quite the Malabrigo selection, which I think at very competitive prices and even a little bit less than I've seen in other places. They have all different weights and types and from the way that it's spun and dyed. And then, um, so there's the, the front of the store, the counter, and so forth. And the ladies, they were busy, and we all still had masks on. Um, so they're off doing their thing. And then to the left here on these racks, all kinds of accessories, both front and back for knitting and crocheting. And pretty much, you know, what you need, or at least to get you started, and then some extras too. So as you can see, there's shawl pins. And then what caught my eye were these very lovely purse handles. And I especially like the woven ones in the center, these two. This one being my favorite. It's pretty stiff, though, but I, I like it very, very much. It's very sturdy, secure, and well-made. And I also like this double-handed one, handled one a lot. I thought that was pretty neat looking. <laughs> Even a little bit a lint roller. So those retail, those sell for about $18, some baskets, and then to the right, two walls, both left and right side, full of Malabrigo. 
and there are some fingerings down at the end, um, but you have your oh your DK weight and then the worsted weights and the chunkies and then there's even the alpaca blend, silk blend. I mean just so such a wonderful selection. It would be so hard to choose unless you know what you want and then maybe even walk out with some you didn't know you wanted but thought you needed. <laughs> there's the silpaca, the machita, and you know it goes on and on and on, the Aurora. Um, I like that thickness a lot. I and I've I've only tried a couple few different ones. The chunkies are quite nice too. And this store is so deep. You know, I already told you the square footage of it. It's just amazing. Love the flooring. We have two walls, one wall of crochet here, and here are some artisan hooks. And they're really pretty. I like that the way that they're turned. I did pull out a couple and test them and you know for my comfort and taste and the feel and how it slides or grips the hook or not and so forth um, I decided not to get it because it just caught for me and the type of yarn that I was using just a little bit too much but they, they felt smooth otherwise and then over here are the Brittany hooks now I've have two sets of the Brittany needles and I like those very much also and these are comfortable in the hand um, but again for that type of yarn I just um, slowed me down a bit too much and I had to adjust the angle of the my hand and the hook to really get it to go with the flow how I wanted. So I did not get those, but I think they could be quite lovely otherwise. And then this is Madeline Tosh, their Tosh DK. Love those two on the left and right. What I'm referring to is carnival colors and even those earth tones at the top with the green in it. I think wonderful and really remind me of the area around here with all the pine trees. And for, you know, because we're in spring and going into summer very quickly now, I just thought these were quite lovely. And for the type of yarn and the brand it is, I, I thought that that was right in there. Cape Town Rainbow, that's called. And I thought it would be softer than it actually was, but sometimes it just depends on the dyes. And this brand here, Mirasol, I've seen online, but I've never had the pleasure to see it in person. So that was quite wonderful love all the colors that are on this rack and I'd like to explore this a little bit more sometime and you um, I, I haven't seen any of these so these were quite interesting to me also just a feast and candy for the eyes over here we have more of the knitting and apparently they have a fiber club savings so you probably get a punch card you know, for X amount you spend, you get X amount back in purchase. and purchase. Then here are the Brittany needles. I uh, like quite well. They are um, sustainably made in California from Birchwood. I like that in the USA. They're, they're smooth. They glide. They have a bit of bite to them, but they're not real like sticky tight like the uh, clover ones that I found can be. And I like the tips too. They're not too pointy and not too blunt. For me, they're just right. And then over here, we have buttons, buttons, and more buttons. All kinds. Isn't that so cute? The three sheep in the window. And then to the right on this brick wall, Montana Meadow Wool, I believe that says, with the herding dog and the sheep. And then Swarovski Crystals. Above that, some vintage German buttons and then down below in the um, basket barrel type bins and the baskets you can see there's enamel and wooden and some specially handmade and then uh, the tubes these come from various companies so you have some basic all the way up to just like the floral and whimsical fun and funky and on that top shelf some really neat beaded buttons and then again more enameled some like check glass type of buttons and ones with different motifs on them also 
So you can see right there on the left that was a pom-pom maker and you have some of your usual standard types and then some and everything here is for both knitting and crocheting. Lots and lots of stitch markers and these really caught my eye the little kind of wound balls and that's by a Haya Haya brand. I think those are so cute. Almost wish I'd bought those now but at least I know where I can get them. <laughs> And now as we make our way down this first aisle here, I had to stop and take a look at this color work beauty. I mean, pretty basic stitch, but I mean, can you imagine all those color changes in there? I, I just think that is absolutely stunning. So they have some basic uh, like uh, brands like Plymouth Yarn. Not that necessarily Plymouth has a lot of just only basic yarns. There's cashmere, all different types. They used to have a lot more Cascade. That's on the other side of the wall. And they do have a little bit, not like they used to, but they have just an incredible variety. And um, let's see, these caught my eye also. The speckles always do. To me, they're just so fun and lively. And then over to the right, I went, what's this? What's this? And I had to go check it out. I knew it was something special. And especially when I got up close, it just blew my mind. Art Yarns Beaded Silk Sequins. It's 100% silk with Murano glass beads. 50 grams. Okay, you ready for this? A 50 gram. 110 yards. $44. And if those of you who don't know about Murano glass, it's from Italy and is from my knowledge and most of it and I don't know if it still is but at least early on it was hand blown too. Now this is a crochet piece. Love that they have a beautiful crochet piece on display by Feza Feza Yarns and that's actually a brand of Earth and that's U-R-T-H and this four pack gradient is a 50-50 mercerized cotton slash rayon blend that's a colorway I'd really like to have. In a DK weight, 960 yards total, it does have that textural feel to it, but also gives a really interesting stitch definition, sheen and sleekness due to the mercerization and the rayon in it. Now, I was very interested in the pattern, but it's been taken down online due to some inconsistencies. And then, now these are by unique, isn't that funny, U-N-E-E-K, take on that, and um, very pretty, pretty cotton, you know, I love my cottons, and the unique is, I noticed, still also by Earth yarn, so they have a lot of different lines within their company, and this is a ribbon type, that's really pretty. Now, if you are tactically sensitive due to the kind of raw coarseness of this, it might not feel so great against your skin, but I can definitely see it worked in with another yarn or used as a trim or a border, and I think it would make a really neat bag or a purse. And then as we make our way back around, color, color, and more color, <laughs> this is Brown Sheep Company on the left. It's United States company. It's grown and manufactured here. It's uh, Pima cotton and merino wool from their sheep farm. This is their cotton fleece. It's a number three worsted weight and it's it's got that cottony texture and bite to it. It's a very good workhorse yarn for that weight and I have worked with that before. And then on both sides, right and left, they're both very wooly, wooly texture type. And I also found this quite interesting, the original Dutch style window with another wall placed on the outside wall at some point in time, which I assume was for security measures. And then as you can see, they left the mortar as is and someone had just painted a little bit over the brick and just adds another unique element to this wonderful place. And as I rounded the corner, I was completely wowed as I had no idea they had such a selection of undyed yarn. They have a couple different brands, their in-house brand, and then this one of your natural wool and different types of fibers that take dye really well. This is 95% baby llama and 5% stellina a sport weight 
and it's hard to really capture that sparkle on camera, especially the Stellina, which resembles fibers and hairs and blends well and integrates very nicely and it's with the fibers and it's super soft picks it up just a little bit there and so they have so many different types of again of fibers and thicknesses and how they're they're spun together and this is by Plymouth their dye D-Y-E for me haha <laughs> get it and then here's another one with the Stellina in it and then an alpaca tensile and bamboo blend. Wow, 315 yards and a sport weight. And then merino cashmere. So all different you know, types. This is a fingering and different price points as well. And then over to the right. Oh, here, here, yeah, real quick. First, these are soles for making slippers along with crochet patterns for felted slippers and clogs. And then I'm going to flip to a page and it shows you one with the Ravelry number and the price on it, which I thought was another wonderful crocheted piece to display and to support their crochet community as well as the knit. And I'm not sure which these are, but it's nice that they have both. Really, really nice. And then at the very back end of this aisle, here are Country Classic dyes, and they transform wool, silk, nylon, and many other protein fibers into under or oversaturated creations. And it says in 30 minutes. So here's a swatch of all the different colors. And then around the corner on this other wall, we have Paradise Fibers, their in-house brand. So again, we get into some very fine yarns, more of the uh, worsted type, different ways that they're spun. Oh, this is interesting. 70%, yeah, that's it, kid mohair and 30% mulberry silk. And then one with metallic thread running through it also. And what do you think of the size of those knitting needles? <laughs> How about working with them? It would probably take several people to get it done at least. That is real roving yarn and of course I had to go over and just touch it a little bit and had I thought a lovely feel. I, I was expecting something much more raw feeling. And then this whole section as you can see really nice seating gathering table and then this area it's all for spinning and weaving and various other types of fiber arts. And this tool looked very interesting to me. I love wood and tools too. I thought it made me, it says adjustable, some type of holder stretcher. I'm not sure, but if you do, please let me know on that. So I just walked down this aisle and checked out the various different tools here. And then I looked up and gasped. I'm like, oh, what is this gorgeousness? I have to check it out. It is super fine merino, mulberry silk, rose fiber, and 10%, I think it is, faux cashmere. It's 16 ounces, so you get a whole pound of that. Absolutely beautiful with this subtle shimmer, and I, I, I just thought that was amazing. And this whole wall of color, 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 more color. Well, of course, it's a yarn shop, right? <laughs> and then you've got the, the fine wash for you know, your different um, wools and different specialty fibers and the little baskets and some are bottles and some are little packets that you can get just to give it a try. And then now we mosey on over back to the left here. You've got your ball winder and Yarn Swift and that is a really nice one too. And then amazing five spinning wheels and I'm not for certain on this but I did read online somewhere that the part co-owner here he makes some of these so next time I, I'll pop in and have to ask I just thought what a lovely place to sit and spin and practice and learn the craft and in the winter time got a nice fireplace there to get all cozy and um, then on this back wall, there is type of thread. There are these really big cones of it, 
and it says uh, it's super lamb four slash eight eleven hundred and twenty yards and this one Louette Euroflax wet spun linen sport so different types of fibers and then back in here you have all these spools I've never seen spools that big <laughs> have you they remind me of big old ocean fishing reels <laughs> they just have everything in here really and then there is more back here and there's even a plastic loom so <laughs> why not right so I kept going and peeked around the corner and there's actually an arrow and it says up the ramp in Fiberland. I didn't go all the way back though. It's starting to get late, late and they're getting ready to close. But again with another wheel and working bin so kind of looks like maybe that's where some of the other magic happens. So then I just went over here and I wanted to check out what that little alcove is in the back and then what's happening over here oh something else magical caught my eye with the hand spindles and again handcrafted wood wow love that that to me that is just a work of art and a beauty unto itself and there's several different types of the the wood that's put together in different patterns there you've got the, the checkerboard style and some more just the smooth natural stained tones of the wood and that looks like that's their in-house brand as well and um, so many interesting things i'm trying to take it all in i'm sure i didn't even see everything that's there and then these caught my eye too and i thought absolutely stunning the the coloration and the effects and then i went wait a minute is that malabrigo i didn't do, know they did roving yarn and sure enough that's piedras that is you know their signature looking labels and i turned it over and yes indeed so that would be inspiring right there i mean that's enough to to kind of you know whet my appetite on um, wanting to possibly try something like that one day for fun and then again paradise fibers they have already put together coordinating color packets and there you've got your whole rainbow assortment and um, so it's already kind of thought out and planned for you which i thought was quite nice And then up that ramp inside here is a wonderful resource library, except that brick wall makes me a little bit nervous. Now over here, there's Louette brand, 100% flax. I think it is 100%. And then there's Merino wool. Just so, so many interesting brands and different types of fibers all throughout the store. Then on the left hand side, there's Debbie Bliss. And over here is some Katia yarn, their Lunas yarn. And then below that is what really caught my eye. And I think it is a cotton blend, that one right there. And I just like the different, the texture in that. And um, of course, I love the color, you know, I love that family of colors. And I really liked it because I went back to it a couple of times. But it's an interesting, it's a cotton acrylic nylon blend, as you saw. And it, it is very textural, but I think that could make a very interesting piece. This is really interesting to me also ashlon collection it's 75 percent virginia grown cotton and then 25 percent american raised merino wool so you have part from virginia and part from ranchers in wyoming it's a sheep and wool company and it's made in augusta springs virginia where the two have kind of i guess collaborated into one yarn so um that caught my eye and I was really happy to see unique yarns from our country also. And then um, more haiku going into some of their others. They're, they're simply worsted and so forth. So I just kind of had to check everything out as I worked my, my way back to the beginning of the store. 
And over here now we're into the Cascade brand zone and then also Finley Farm, which I really like a lot. And I was turned on to this brand by my friend Nancy. And uh, now this one is a higher merino content and then silk, or maybe it is 50-50. And yeah, it is. And that's a lace weight. You get 798 yards. The, the hand, the feel of it is amazing. Love this one, caught my eye. Definitely going to have to come back and check this out in the fall. It's 109 yards, super bulky, 50 alpaca, 45 acrylic, 5% wool. I love chainette construction. I think that it would make a perfect just about anything for the uh, cooler months. And I'm so happy to see they still carry Cascade because that is a Washington company. And it's nice to support, you know, something within our own state. And I really do like the Pima Cottons. It's a much higher quality, very long staple, so you get a really nice, smooth hand. Okay, well, I'm sorry this ended so abruptly. They were past closing, and I wanted to get moving along. But this concludes our tour anyway, so I hope you enjoyed it, because I have a couple of others on my list I would like to check out over the summer. So if you would, let me know in the comment section, and please give me a thumbs up on that. Okay, well, take care, everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks so much for coming along with me. It was a lot of fun. Thank you.